Hey guys, Sam from West Meadow Rabbits here. If you didn't guess by my very Seen Better Days American flag apron, today we are butchering the rabbit. If you haven't already watched my video about how to prepare for butchering the rabbit, I recommend you do that now. It's kind of required watching. There are some steps you need to take to get ready for this. So, again, fair warning before I um, get into this. Again, fair warning, this video is going to be graphic. We're going to be killing and processing a rabbit. Uh, I have no problem with people not being okay with that. I just recommend you stop watching the video now. There's no need to, you know, say mean things in the comments. I'm sure some of you probably will. <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is how meat is made. If you eat meat, you should be at least comfortable with this. And if you don't eat meat, that's totally fine for you, but I uh, just ask that you uh, maintain a healthy respect for those of us who do. And uh, like I said, again, this is your last chance to kind of look away. It's going to be graphic. All right, so the rabbit we're doing today is um, about, I would say, 14 weeks old. So he's a little older, but the reason I'm processing him is, as you saw in my other video talking about not taking your rabbit to the vet, He's got some issues. It looks like he's got some kind of infection on his scrotum, which is pretty gross, but um, I'm not going to be taking him to the vet. He's also very small for a male of his age, so he's getting cold. So we're gonna go grab him and we'll get going. Okay guys, so as you can see, I got my rabbit. It's a super shame that he's uh, a little small and he's got this issue because he's a really nice looking rabbit, but that's life. Anyways, so first thing we do is we get him nice and calm. Make sure he's not freaking out when you go to do this. That's just gonna make life a thousand times more difficult. I also have a lovely camera lady today, so a big shout out to my girlfriend for helping me with this. It'd be very difficult to do otherwise, so let's get this started. Okay, so as you can see, like I talked about in my video discussing what we need to do to prepare, I've got my rabbit ringer right here. Things seem better days, I know. This works for me though. Obviously, if you were doing this for human consumption, you would want this to be a little bit more professional, a little bit more hygienic, but this is just for me, and the only rabbit meat I sell is for dog food, so that's the way it goes. So, like I said, we're gonna try to keep him calm, and the key here is gonna be able to get a good grip on his back legs, and simultaneously, in kind of one fluid movement, get him and his head in here. This will work better with some rabbits than others, but we're gonna see how it goes. Let me just make sure everything's good right there. So, you know, they're gonna get freaked out by putting their head in this small space. And I can kind of pull this back a little bit to make sure it's the right size. So you take it in and you pull, that's it. He's completely dead now. You can see no response in the eyes and we're gonna go ahead and start butchering. Okay, so I've got my rabbit and like I said, we're gonna see a lot of twitching. So the first thing I do is I make an incision behind the Achilles tendon and just pop that on there. And this is a little difficult to do when they're spazzing out like this, which is why I really recommend you get a slip knot if you're a beginner. You know, don't go with the meat hooks. You can see he's already bleeding. Come over here. So when you get the neck, you wanna make sure you cut right to the skin. You wanna avoid as much fur as possible. And we're just gonna let him bleed. And you can kind of make, you can see right there, I've got the vein. And it's important that we get as good as bleed as we can. Because that's going to make sure our meat is nice and clean. Now again, he's got a beautiful pelt that I would use if he was older. But since he's younger, you know, there's not much I can do with this. It's very fragile pelt. Okay, so now is the time if you're saving the head you probably gonna wanna put that off to the side or if you're saving the ears, they make fantastic dog and cat treats. I'm not doing either of those, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting. And the hardest part here is getting through the vertebrae, vertebrae, excuse me. You've gotta kinda, I got lucky. <laughs> Find a nice chink between the, um, between the vertebrae and that'll pop right off there. And again, this is why I recommend the apron because it's gonna get a little messy. <laughs> And as you can see, the animal's totally dead, but we can still see that he's having these twitch responses. Obviously, it's dead because it's missing its head. <laughs> but don't get freaked out if it's twitching a lot. Even after you, you know, break its neck and the head's still on, it's gonna twitch. That's a normal part of the process. So to remove the front paws, which is what you're gonna start with, you find a nice 
little kink in that first joint there. Try to get as close as you can. I cut the front and the back. There's a surprising amount of ligaments that hold this thing on here. Um, so you don't be shy trying to cut through that. And again, not to be too creepy, but rabbit anatomy is actually pretty similar to humans. So <laughs> those joints are gonna be in the same spot. Now this is the hardest part, taking the pelt off. So you're gonna wanna kinda pinch the skin. You can see how I'm pinching the skin there. Without slicing your finger off, cut parallel to the meat. And this is gonna give you a nice sort of spot to open up in. And if you're doing my method where you're using the Achilles tendon to hold the rabbit on there, make sure you don't snip that or it'll fall right off. So we do both legs first, or at least I do. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who do this differently, but as the saying goes, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. There's a lot of ways to butcher a rabbit. This works for me. You're gonna find what's comfortable for you. Oh, by the way, this is why he's getting uh, butchered. Something's going on there. Looks like he may have been almost castrated by his brother. <laughs> They'll do that. All right, anyways, so now that you've got your leg kind of cut open, you reach your finger in here between the skin and the meats, and you get a little, little nice start there, and you're gonna bring the knife in, again, being careful not to cut yourself, and you're gonna start just cutting it down. And that's gonna give us one side. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other. And you can see I'm just pulling it almost. It should come off pretty easily, especially when they're this young. It's gonna be harder the older the animal gets. But for now, you know, we're not doing anything too crazy. So then now that I've got both sides down, you can see I can almost reach through to the other side. Just pass through the membrane, cut up. So that's the front. The back is a little trickier. Again, there's two schools of thought on this kind of way you want to approach it if you want to come right here so they can kind of see. <clears throat> so you can sort of reach behind, not including the tail. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna take the tail probably in one go. All right. Now, yeah, you can, you can bring it around. So I've, I've heard this called, you're basically peeling a meat banana. <laughs> So you're gonna wanna grab with both hands and pull firmly down. Again, the younger the rabbit is, the easier this is gonna be to do. It's gonna be significantly harder on older rabbits. So I sort of just pop the front legs out first. Makes life a little easier. But that's, that's your, usually your trouble spots is gonna be your front legs and your head. That seemed to go pretty well. Again, keep in mind, it's gonna be a lot more difficult for an older rabbit. All right, now this is the tricky part. So we've got all this nastiness, plus is clearly very fucked up testicle. So I'm gonna try to get this all off in one go. Obviously with a female, you're not gonna have this issue. Guys don't pass out, but there's all this junk. <laughs> and then it's it happened to work out again because he's a male. Usually when you pull the male's uh, genitals off, it'll kind of rip this hole in the cavern. If it doesn't, and it's a female, it's the same thing. You're just gonna pinch the skin here and make a little incision. Then you're gonna take your knife. I kind of put it in front of my finger. You got that? And then I just go down the front. And my finger's in there to make sure my knife doesn't puncture any organs. Okay, now we're looking at the main show here. First thing I like to start with is, this is your bladder right here. We don't wanna get any urine on the meat, so you kind of grab it as best you can, pinch it as tight as you can. Snip that right off. Next thing we're looking at here, if you want to keep your, oh, those aren't his kidneys, that's odd. He's got a little bit of uh, internal bleeding here. But um, you want, if you wanna keep your kidneys, you can pull those out. They're perfectly fine to eat. These are a little small, and he had some kind of infection going on there, so I'm not gonna keep them today, even though they look perfectly fine. A uh, non-healthy kidney will be somewhat obvious. Same thing with the liver, but we'll get to that. So the next thing you can do here is you've got all his internal guts right here. But before we do that, this right here is the colon, which we don't want to get any fecal material on the meat. Again, it's not the end of the world with a rabbit for yourself, but let's be smart. So I slide the knife up through and I'm just going to slice right through the hips, which is actually surprisingly easy to do. So this nasty looking stuff right here is scent glands, which I highly recommend you attempt to get 
off. They have a very strong smell and they will affect the taste of the meat if you don't remove them. They're bigger on some rabbits than others. Now you can see I've got the, I've got basically the anus and well there it goes. I had the anus. <laughs> now I've got the colon and I'm just gonna remove that like so and now I can take the actual guts out. So we've got the this, by the way, I've talked about in the videos, this is the sesum, which is the modified large intestine. This is where they kind of ferment their food. So this is the part that's, you know, sensitive. And then here's the stomach, of course, the smaller intestines, roughly the same deal. So that's all over there. None of that's edible. Um, as a side note, you really should try to make sure that your rabbit hasn't eaten for at least, uh, at least a day before. And you probably want to restrict water, you know, like six hours before. Now I'm trimming off the belly, which is essentially, this would make rabbit bacon. You can stick this in a meat grinder, you can slice it up and um, dehydrate it and make rabbit bacon out of it. You can turn it into ground rabbit. But again, for today, he's so small and I'm only doing one rabbit. It's not really worth the effort for me, but of course you can. Now, the final part that requires some finesse is the liver. So here's the liver right here. It's always good to check the liver and make sure it's healthy. This one looks pretty good. If there's any obvious splotches or discoloration, you know, it's somewhat common. There's some parasites that can cause that. I wouldn't recommend eating it. This green thing right here is the gallbladder. If you're gonna eat the liver, you need to remove this. The simplest way is to just get it and pinch it and then pull it off. If you burst that open on the liver, it's not worth eating. It's gonna taste absolutely awful. But again, I'm not gonna be eating that today. Okay, so we're getting towards the end here. Now, this is the diaphragm. This is what contracts to help you breathe. You can see we've got muscle twitching still here. Don't be freaked out by that. The diaphragm can just get pulled out. And then we've got the lungs and the heart. So I'm gonna start with the lungs. Usually I pull them both out at once. This discoloration here is from blood in the lungs essentially. But you know, you can see they're still pretty full of air. A lot of people like to fry these up. Supposedly they're pretty good, but I won't be eating that today. Again, all these guts, with the exception of the intestines, can be um, dog food. Everything can be chicken food if you have them. They'll, they'll thank you for it. So the last thing to pull out is the heart, which again, you can eat. Now, since we're mostly finished here, the last thing I like to do is do a little cleaning up. It can be a little difficult to get the, because it's so, usually the blood pools in here. But there's the larynx and the trachea. So we're just making sure we've got all that out. And as you can see, this is where the blood collects because we bled it upside down and this is where the heart is. We're gonna take this in and rinse this out, but that's not gonna be in the video, so don't stress too much about that. Now, as I said, you should have your pot of water here for cleaning off the rabbits. And it should be cold water because we wanna keep the carcass as cold as we can. The last thing I'm going to do here, now that we're getting close to the end, this is helpful if you have a sink, you can be rinsing it off, but for me, I don't, I don't bother. You want to try to keep as much hair off as possible. It's a pain in the ass to get off, especially uh, once the rabbit gets wet. But, you know, there's only so much you can do. Now, getting the back foot off is a little tricky. You've got to cut through a good amount of ligaments, so I often find it easier just to dislocate the joint and then slice. Lucky rabbit's foot. Go ahead and toss him in my cooling pot right here. And again, this is not the fanciest way to do this. Probably not even the best, but it works for me. I recommend you look around on YouTube. You'll see a lot of different methods for doing this. I'll link to uh, Daniel Salatin's video as a particularly professional. He really knows what he's doing, but they sell their rabbits for meat. And if you're thinking of doing that, I recommend you do a little more further research. But like I said, in Massachusetts, we can't sell the rabbit meat for human consumption. So this will do it for a backyard thing. Now, I know this looks like a bloody mess right now, but once I get this inside, get it rinsed off. It's going to clean up nicely. And then after you let it age for a few days, it's going to look even better. So I don't know how long that was. How long would you say that was? Less than 20. Yeah, so I mean, it's like roughly a 10 minute process for a rabbit. The better you get with it, the faster it'll be. Obviously, it'll take a little longer for an older rabbit, but these younger ones is pretty quick. And uh, yeah, that's the name of the game. That's how you do it. I'm going to end it here so I can go clean this up. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And until next time, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.